Let me come to you, uh, Etienne. First of all, uh, I have to be honest with you, uh, doing a Rwandan show is not gen journalistically very easy. It's uh, not uh, very easy, uh, Shaka is your test, it, especially from a distance, like from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I've been covering Rwanda for quite some time, so I, I would say two decades and more. Uh, but if you have to cover Rwanda, really the, one of the most challenging experience you can have is to act, be able to access your sources, mm -hmm. especially the information holders, be they from uh, senior high government officials, human rights activists, opposition leaders, and even some of the little folks, just regular people who can provide you with the information of what you need, what's going on, what happened, any comments or anything. So it's been a challenge, especially if you have to call, continue to call, and uh, sometimes you end up not getting anything of what you wanted. Would you consider those challenges perhaps unique compared unique. to and contrasting to covering other countries on the African continent? Unique, yes. Again, as Rwanda defines itself for the last 20 years plus, it's a unique experience as Rwanda is a country, but also unique experience as Rwandans. But also in terms of coverage, Rwanda wants to be unique. You have some regional or international standards you have to follow for some other countries, but Rwanda wants to define itself as unique. I'm talk about this because whenever I want to access any Rwandan sources, especially government officials, sometimes they don't have much to say. It seems they don't really possess the information you're looking for, and therefore it's very hard for you to get it to extract the relevant information would like to broadcast or to use for your programs. And sometimes also, of course, phones may be not going through. You may end up not able to get your phone. But when they come on uh, the program, are they free uh, to talk or do they sound like uh, they are probably reading from a script? Script in Rwanda they, is what they call like it's a, it's a narrative. What kind of narrative are you trying to bring out or trying to tell? Mm. What kind of story do you have to tell? So people have learned that through experience, through all this every day, that there is some way to tell the Rwandan story. That's a narrative. It can be the narrative of the Rwandan government itself, but especially the narrative from the Rwandan ruling party, the Rwandan ruling party, the Rwandan patriarchy front, RPF. This, if you go back to Rwandan history, Shaka, you know better than I do probably, or we, we have better information. Since 1994, when the genocide ended, there is a way Rwandans, especially the government and the ruling party, want to define themselves. How do you look at Rwanda? It should be unique. Especially the rulers, they say, we stopped the genocide. So we have much to say in our own unique way. Mm. That's one of the challenges experience you have to go through. Even when you have to extract any kind of information from a Rwandan official, mm. again, be it a party ruler, mm. A government official or any other person you want to talk to. 